From the SF Standard, women accused a rising San Francisco political star of some terrible things and met a wall of silence. They say, following the publication of his story on the allegations against John Jacobo, senior reporter Josh whatever joined ABC7, which is completely compromised, getting answer segment today to discuss the reactions to the article and the year's worth of reporting that went into it. And they're not going to mention it, or maybe they will mention it, but not in the headline. It's obviously a Democrat, and it's going around. It's all over the place. This weird sex stuff is just so intrusive, and maybe some of it's true, maybe some of it's not, because it's always their go-to accusation, right? Even in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, they make a joke about the 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 predictable smear is something to do with women and then of course it only works in one direction right so if anybody lobs one allegation at somebody right of Hillary Clinton that's true instantly shout out to Brett Kavanaugh but if you're big you're you're Bill Clinton you're slick Willie Clinton then you're gonna have your fixers try to make all of those pro uh, all those problems go away but of course that's a different story now to a story that's rocking the San Francisco political landscape. Today, a man who had been a rising star in seemingly Teflon in San Francisco politics resigned from his powerful job. The stunning development happened after our media partner, the San Francisco Standard, published its investigation into John Jacobo, who had been in charge of an extremely connected and well-funded housing nonprofit. Oh, yeah, a housing nonprofit, and we've seen several stories in recent weeks, actually, and maybe that's why this has come up, that the housing nonprofits are complete scam artists, the NGOs are complete scam artists, and, you know, the politicians in California don't really know what happened to, I think, $24 billion with a B, right? I mean, the corruption is just through the roof. I think, I hope, maybe we've hit a wall, and it's going to start going back, otherwise it's I don't know. I, I literally go back and forth. Maybe we've had enough, but maybe their claws are in too deep and it doesn't matter if we've had enough. They're going to keep doing it. So your only hope is to get in on the corruption. In this new article, three separate women paint a picture of rape and abuse against the powerful political figure and claim that they were met with a wall of silence. Yeah. And just I mean, we know that homelessness housing is a huge problem in the Bay Area and California as a whole. So for this guy to be a, you know, housing advocate is just predictable. It's par for the course. These people are completely disgusting and they want nothing more than continue their corruption and spread it to all other 49 states. Joining us live in the studio now is the Standard senior reporter, Josh Kane, who spent a year investigating this? This story took about a year to come together, yes. And it came together, Josh, today in a big way. Before we go further, I just want to show people San Francisco Police Chief uh, Bill Scott's response, actually, after your article was published. Here it is. I won't read the whole thing, but he essentially promises a thorough investigation on this matter. So, Josh, let's back it up now. Who is John Jacobo and what are the allegations against him? Yeah, John Jacobo is a director or was a director for a very powerful uh, affordable housing nonprofit in San Francisco. Uh, it's called TOGCO and it's actually got multiple properties around the South of Market area and they rack up millions of dollars in federal revenue to run these properties. Mm -hmm. They also channel a lot of that money into local politics, uh, usually progressive causes. Uh, yeah, so a housing advocate, weirdo, progressive, scam artist, and this guy's, oh my god, this is just ridiculous. I don't, it shouldn't, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. This is fine. John Jacobo was a director for them, and he was also a once rising star in local politics, seen as a, an heir apparent to the Mission District supervisor seat. However, in 2021, he was publicly accused of rape, and that kind of derailed his political aspirations, but did nothing to affect his status at TOGCO and with other community groups. In fact, we have video of him because we've done stories on him or involving him, right? Also very active in the Latino community, leading some task forces as well. Wait, the... the Latino? I thought it was, I thought it was Latinx. Oh no, it's Latine. Wait, where did the, this is the same, 
This is one of the same publications that tells you to use the new words they made up, and then they can't even do that. I mean, it's just a complete mess. Corruption race to the bottom, as I always say. As well, right? Absolutely. He's actually been uh, recently serving as the spokesperson uh, spokesperson for the Mission Street Vendors Association, mm -hmm. doing TV interviews, very much trying to get back in the spotlight and kind of resurrect his career, so to speak. Maybe Yeah, g going to bat for the fencing operations in the Mission District, which, of course, said, I'm just learning this now. Was that the same guy? I just did a video of some guy going to bat for the, you know, upright, you know, illegal vendors in the mission, and they said he was head of the Latinx organization, and this might be the same guy. Politically, uh, and then this story is now, today, had some pretty pretty big implications. Okay, so who are the women accusing him, and what kind of evidence did you see, did they show you? And they say, they do say he's a progressive, but not once have they mentioned that this man, in the other video, if this is the same guy, we shall see, but... In that video, they mentioned that he is ahead of the Latinx Democratic Coalition or something like that. But now he's just a progressive. Because I guess, even with these allegations that may or may not be true, we don't know. But they don't want to tie him to the Democratic Party. You. Yeah, so there are three women who have accused John Jacobo of everything from domestic violence, which included strangulation, to threats, to harassment, stalking, and then sexual assault and rape. These are the accusations. Mm -hmm. All three of these women, unbeknownst until today, mm -hmm. filed police reports against Jacobo after Sasha Perigo went forward with her accusations. Mm -hmm. uh, we confirmed that they filed the police reports. We had numerous conversations over the course of a year, making sure that we were methodical in making uh, uh, fact checking, as well as making sure that the women were comfortable with the way that we were reporting the story because we wanted to make sure we got it right because these accusations, very explosive, very damaging, and, and there was a lot of fear for not only their professional careers, but also their safety. Because obviously when you see the story, you hear the audio recordings of him threatening one of the women, it's very clear that this is someone who could be dangerous. Yeah, and he is a Democrat activist. And so do we think that, just for the sake of argument, that these allegations are true? Do we think that same guy with California having a huge, I mean, the number one problem is homelessness. Well, I don't know, crime. It, they're, they're, it's a complete mess, as we all know. But do we think this guy is actually going to be honest in providing housing? Or is he going to raise a bunch of money somehow, some way, and then line his own pockets? Right? I mean, how is this? I'm figured out. I don't know. And some of the texts that were also published as part of your article, exchanges between him and some other women, and they were pretty stunning. So uh, Chief Scott responded today and urged sexual assault. If we can put that up again um, in his tweet, you know, he urged sexual assault victims to come forward, all of them. But in your article, the women said that they felt like their police reports really went nowhere for a long time, right? Yeah, well, you hate cops. You don't want them to do anything. So now, oh, now you want the cops. Just like in Washington, the Stripper's Bill of Rights. Well, we already have laws, but you didn't want to enforce the laws. So you want to make new laws to cover up the old laws that you didn't enforce. So how are these women complaining that the cops weren't taking it seriously? You guys raked them over the coals for the past four years. Yeah, and this is actually a common complaint and why a lot of women don't come forward with uh, allegations of sexual abuse and violence. Uh, it's a rigorous, grueling process for the victims, survivors, and a lot of times law enforcement warns them of this, which can come off as like, you know, dissuading them. But also these women said that, hey, we filed our police reports, we followed up, we didn't get calls back. When we did get contact from police, they were not necessarily showing that they were really going. And look, I'd be curious to see if any of these accusers were marching for defund the police in the summer of love. Right. I mean, you can't have it both ways. And they're learning that now. But unfortunately, nothing will happen. Going after it uh, in the course of this year of reporting, I reached out to uh, witnesses, friends, associates of the women who had contemporaneous accounts of what happened within the days and a week or so of the incidents occurring. Mm -hmm. These people told me they never heard from police. What I found in the course of the reporting of this story is that people who could have done something didn't. People who could have actually looked into this and tried to help these women did not take that extra step. Oh, because it involved a Democrat who was raising millions of dollars? You think that's maybe that's why nobody did anything? And as we know, 
you hate the cops, so they weren't going to go to bat for you either. I mean, you you just can't have it both ways. You want something to happen. When you need them, you want them to show up. But when a dope fiend dies on the streets of Minneapolis, you call them all racist. And I get it's a it's a, a strange connection, but this is what happens. This is how we get here. And, oh, man, these people are all despicable. So you've got despicable politician who was running a despicable operation and embezzling money, I'm sure, accused of assault on, uh, and they're covering it, on ABC, which, of course, is a completely compromised, quote-unquote, news organization. There's just no good players in this story. And I don't know this guy, uh, this guy Josh Kane or whatever. I don't know him from a ham sandwich, but I'd be willing to bet that he's no good either because we don't have anybody left in the media. And if there are still there, they, right, maybe I'll do some some background research. But until he gets one smear, smear he, he, can, he shouldn't... He wouldn't even be able to show up on ABC7 if he wasn't already compromised. And just this one time, he he brings them this story, right? I, I mean, it's just there there are no good players in this entire thing. And that was what the story was all about. These women pleas for help, for accountability, feeling like they just kept running up against a brick wall. And that is why they decided to work with me on this story. Now yeah, okay. So the women that I can't say for certain, but were likely all in on defund the police and crying racism around every corner now want the cops to go to bat for them. And yeah, they probably should have that, but you get what you ask for or you get what you voted for, as they say. And I don't know if a lot of people voted for this type of weirdo stuff because it's completely corrupt, but I do know that it's likely not going to, they're, they're not going to be able to vote themselves out of it because the claws are already in too deep, right? You got people who, you got common sense people who have no choice but to run as Democrats in California because that's how strong the brainwashing is. So yeah, you get what you voted for, fair enough, but you can't vote yourself out of it because they are, you've given them control, you've given them the power. And I'm sure we're gonna hear a little bit more about this stuff. And in that whole clip there, they said progressive one time and refused to link him to the Democratic Party. And I think that that is the same guy that went to bat for the illegal mission or the, the totally legal Mission Street um, vendors doing the fencing operation that at that point was a Latinx um, advocate for the Democratic regime. In, I mean, this is just, I, I don't know. I'm done.